Native Prairie is important to me because it's one of the only places I can go and feel connected and a part of something bigger. Um, I think especially right now, it's so hard to feel connected to, to people and, and things that we used to feel connected to. Um, but when you go out onto Native Prairie, you just feel like you're a part of something bigger and your, your worries just wash away and it makes you remember what's really important. And, um, and I think that's really important anytime, but especially right now having a way to come out here and connect with nature is important for a lot of people. Um, why it's important to me, I would say it's stress relief. You know, you come out here and there's no expectations from you, no, de no demands, no judgments. It's a way to just come and be in nature without feeling like I need to contribute in any way. Uh, I mean, this native prairie is pretty pristine. There's no management that I feel needs to be done aside from ensuring that it gets sustainably grazed on a regular basis. And so I can come out here outside of my yard and feel like um, I can just be. For me, native prairie is very, very important. Um, not only have I grown up in Saskatchewan, I've also have fond memories of growing up on the reserve where um, basically your only entertainment is going outside and finding something to do or going berry picking with your grandparents or um, pretty much just being outside and enjoying nature as much as possible. But also as an indigenous archaeologist doing Plains archaeology, I know the rich history that is here it's quite intense to know how the people hunted bison communally, how they survived, how they made shelter from this land. And uh, just looking around even Saskatoon, there's so much history everywhere that most people may not know, but it's, it's part of my identity as an indigenous person as well. Native Prairie is just so ingrained in us and um, there's kind of like this spirit or this feeling that is ingrained. It passes down through generation to generation. And whether or not it's teachings that have been taught and picked up over time and then passed down and uh, developed upon, that's kind of very important to me. And specifically when I think about um, prairie or this area that we live in and talking about the importance is everything has a story, everything has a meaning, and everything interacts together. And that's just kind of included into our indigenous worldview. So this guy right here is our prairie crocus. And this beautiful little flower pops up uh, usually at the end of April, early May. And it signifies that spring is here. But also in Cree, and of course I'm still learning and getting better at it, um, we call it Mostos Otsi which means bison's belly button. And of course it has a story saying, where you see this flower blooming, you know that a bison was born there. So it just kind of reminds you that there's beauty and there's safety and there's history everywhere you go. So to me, why Native Prairie is important is because it carries so much knowledge and you have to slow down enough to listen and hear its story. We ranch out here with our family and we run our cows on quite a bit of native grass, which is an incredibly important part of our operation for us out here. Native grass to us is like gold. It's an honor and an obligation to look after it. As soon as it's tilled up, it's not the same anymore. It can never go back to what it was. And so we take managing our native grass very importantly. Native Prairie is important to me for um, a variety of reasons. Not only does Native Prairie um, provide with us with ecological services such as uh, flood protection, um, clean water, clean air, carbon sequestration, things like that, but Native Prairie is also, you know, sort of a mysterious place to a lot of people and to me that is what makes it 
um, so intriguing and so interesting. Um, it's home to everything from insects to birds to mammals, reptiles and amphibians. Um, and they all have uh, their own unique ways of surviving um, in a prairie ecosystem. Um, and I have such a connection to those, to those species. You know, being someone who uh, works in prairie conservation and being lucky enough to work in prairie conservation, I've really, you know, developed a, a connection and a deep sense of caring for a species that call the prairie home. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about what I do and uh, why I hope and work to continue to, to help others develop their passion for native prairie um, because it is such an important ecosystem um, and I think it's worth protecting. One is the um habitat it provides for the different species of wildlife that you find only in the prairies and not everywhere else. Um, like the long-billed curlew. The beak on that thing is huge and it's a big bird and it's just such a cool looking animal and, and you know I growing up in Ontario I didn't have long-billed curlews so I just find that some of the unique wildlife um, and the habitat the native prairie provides for that wildlife is super important. The other thing is um, Native Prairie is important to me because it provides a place to grow food. Specifically, I'm thinking beef and sheep and, and goats, right? Um, but those animals are so important in maintaining the prairie and, you know, keeping the prairie full of biodiversity and using grazing helps provide the habitat that the different species require. You can't have uniform grazing where you, you know, have your cattle and you support wildlife. It has to be patchy. It has to be at a place where you can provide that habitat for the different species because they all require something different. And that relationship between grazing and wildlife is so important. And it's important in protecting the prairie because you know, in, in my opinion, without ranchers, without the cattle grazing, the prairie would be in trouble more than it already is. And I just, I love that relationship and I just think it's super important. Maybe Native Prairie is important to me because as a First Nations person, um, my ancestors basically owed their existence to Native Prairie. They were able to uh, live off the land and with all the wildlife and the shelter that it gave them were able to basically uh, work out uh, a fairly good living and now in my generation as a livestock producer I raise bucking horses and uh, commercial cattle along with my family we uh, we see ourselves trying to work with a native prairie and what's important to me, why is it important to me is that it kind of, it takes me back to a time where we were kind of one with Mother Earth and we still are and we owe who we are to this day to. Uh... My favorite thing to see on a native prairie is an ephemeral wetland. Um, ephemeral means that it's not there throughout the entire year. It's usually only there in the spring and maybe through part of the summer. And they're my favorite things to see because they are a hotbed of species diversity. There are lots of bugs and birds and bats and amphibians and reptiles. You can see snakes there and um, they're very exciting because sometimes if you're really lucky you can see fairy shrimp at an ephemeral wetland and those are one of my favorite organisms to see in a native prairie. My favorite thing to see when I go onto a patch of native prairie grassland is the birds. Um, there's birds there that you can't find anywhere else um, in the world so that's always super cool to see. I also really love looking for wildflowers. Um, same thing again there's lots of plants there that are specialized for that specific habitat. 
So I spend most of my time looking at the sky for birds and the other half looking at the ground looking for flowers. I think the favorite thing for me to see is uh, you know, the colors, the flowers, the birds, uh, the sights and the sounds. It's just, uh, it's just an awesome part of, of the native prairie grasses that we have here. Uh, it may sound odd to some people, but uh, I really like seeing the grasses just because they're, they're unique and uh, tough to distinguish. But uh, actually in the springtime when I really need it, um, what I like to see is the, the little gems of the, the new flowers coming up. Um, three flowered avens, crocuses, sedges, buttercups, um, wild violets. Uh, here we don't get very many golden bean uh, like we did in Alberta and Saskatchewan in the springtime. Uh, but I used to enjoy those when I was uh, working in those provinces. I, as a cattle producer, I really enjoy being able to see my herd and be able to come out here and utilize the landscape and make sure that it's being used productively. And what is my favorite thing to see in Native Prairie, and honestly it is this, just beautiful, natural, huge pieces of Native Prairie, untouched, and just nature in its purest form. I think that it's undisturbed and you cannot find something like this in the city. You know, you can't make something like this. This is something that we need to protect because if we wreck Native Prairie, you cannot get it back, ever. So yeah, this is, this is my favorite thing and I think that if more people were able to see this, then maybe they would appreciate it a little bit more. Why should people care about protecting native prairie? Um, native grasslands are one of the most endangered and least protective ecosystems in the whole world. So we're really lucky that we still have some native grassland in Saskatchewan and Canada. Um, unfortunately, less than 20% of native grassland remains in Canada. So we have some, but not a lot. So it's really important that we do protect what we still have left. Um, another um, component to that is that because of that degree of habitat loss, the species that depend on those native grasslands have also experienced dramatic population declines. Um, for example, grassland songbirds have declined by over 80% in the last 30 or 40 years, and that's huge. And so lots of those species are now considered at risk and in need of extra protection as well. I don't understand people who don't care about the prairie, um, especially people who live here. But if you can't appreciate the beauty, the way the hawks soar through the sky, the, w the intricate way that the plants and the insects are related to one another, then maybe you can appreciate all the services that Native Prairie provides to us, the way the wetlands purify water, the way the land itself holds carbon. You know, prairie plants have deep, deep roots and prairie soils are exceptional for their ability to sequester carbon. So the more native prairie we have, the better job we're going to do of mitigating climate change. So that's very important and very hopeful. I really don't know if there's anything that I could say or do to get somebody to care about native prairie. It is more about you know, connection to the place and connection to nature. So what I would suggest to people is just to find some piece of nature that you can connect with and be an advocate for. Whether that's a park down your street or grasslands or forested environments or meadows, wetlands, you know, whatever you are connected to, find it and Try to get information on who manages that land, how do they manage it, are there volunteer programs, is there help that you can provide that environment and the more you learn and find out, the more you are able to speak up for it and protect it over time. I think that's really what natural environments need, is not everybody on the earth to care about one environment but for everybody to have something natural that they care about and can speak up for.
I would basically take them and show them Native Prairie. Uh, a lot of times Native Prairie is associated with Southern Saskatchewan with the area down by the U.S. border. Um, but in our Capel Valley, that is all Native Prairie. And when managed correctly, it is probably one of the most beautiful places on earth. And showing them the grandeur of it and how it can be um, you, how it can be taken and used, but also too taken and abused as well by people who don't take care of it. Um, showing them the results of, all, of both things is something that has to be, that the public has to be made aware of. So when we go through the valley, we do our guided walks, we stop them in specific places and we allow them to experience the world around them. And it's not just me lecturing you and kind of pointing and going instead. Um, it's kind of a conversation between friends. So when you come through our valley and you come with one of our guides, we'll share with you what we know personally. So usually I'll share something different from other guides just because I'm sharing with you the history that I've learned and my perspectives. So when we talk about plants, I'll tell you how I experience that plant, whether or not it's a juniper berry from the crawling juniper that grows along the ground. Tell other people, say, they say it tastes sweet, but to me it tastes like pepper. And it's building those stories and how, telling those stories um, allow people to have that opportunity to experience it for themselves and build their own connections. Just go be out there. Go out there, use your five senses. Sight, hearing, touch, smell, even taste. You'll find something that you like. I can't tell you why to love anything. You have to go and discover for yourself. Go be out there. The thing that most people don't understand about native grass is if you look after her and you manage her, she will provide for you. And it's so important because our native grass is a species at risk. It's an ecosystem at risk. So our job as landowners is to protect it, manage it, look after it for generations to come. So our kids have a chance and our grandchildren have a chance to enjoy her beauty. I think one of the biggest misunderstandings the general public have about uh, Native Prairie is they're just lack of knowledge or experience with it. Um, so the Plains region, what we call, um, actually goes from where we are kind of north of Saskatoon even, all the way down to the panhandle of Texas, from the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains to the Mississippi River, um, is what we call the Plains, the Plains biome. And in that biome, there's an abundance of different plants. There's an abundance of different histories and cultures that were there now and in the past and continue to thrive. All of these different species and these peoples are so vast in this huge region and um, across that entire area, you can't just say, yeah, it's grass and it's flat. No, it's, it's a lot of different things. There's a lot of organisms and uh, food chains and all these wonderful things that kind of make it what it is and it's very special and it's very unique to everywhere in the world. I think the general public looks at a native prairie and sees a, a sea of grass and they think that because it has a simple structure that it also has perhaps not many species. But um, a native prairie is simple the way an ocean looks simple from the surface. But once you get down into it, Native prairie has so many species of all kinds of different organisms, so many different kinds of grasses and sedges and flowering plants, so many different kinds of invertebrates, um, everything from ants and beetles and bees and butterflies to um, dragonflies and mayflies that hang around those wetlands I was talking about. Um, so all of those organisms, the plants and the invertebrates, are uh, food in terms of nectar or um, in terms of prey, 
for other organisms like swallows or bats or um, hawks or uh, any kind of coyote or fox, uh, any, any kind of animal that eats either um, grasses and flowering plants or invertebrates can find lots to eat in the native prairie. And so they generally have a lot of different kinds of species. They have a very high species diversity. So native prairies are really complex and um, have a high biodiversity, even though they look fairly simplistic um, at first glance. A lot of people think that the native prairie is boring, that there's nothing to see, and nothing could be farther from the truth. But it does require a little close attention to know what you're seeing. So I encourage everyone to get, um, you know, some good research resources, or better yet, go with a friend who's caught the prairie bug and go exploring. Absolutely, definitely worth your while. I think the other thing that Another thing that people misunderstand about the prairie is that there's none left. And it is true that the prairies in Saskatchewan and elsewhere in North America have taken a big hard hit in the last few generations, few human generations. But even here in Saskatchewan, we have at least 10% of the native grassland left and plenty of opportunity for restoration. So this is a world that absolutely deserves and will benefit from our attention. What does the public uh, misunderstand about Native Prairie? Uh, I think the, probably the number one misconception that it's wasteland, that there is no value, uh, that it's just open space, it's only good for cows, and that's it. And you know, and if you're living near an urban center, oh, it's it's the best place to put an acreage, or it's the best place to put the next shopping center. So getting people uh, aware of that value, the ecological goods and services, uh, the the value of the carbon sequestration, the value of the pollinator services for your canola crops, your your flowers in your yard. If it wasn't for bees out on Native Prairie pollinating, you wouldn't have pollinators out in your crops or in your yards. Also getting people uh, to appreciate uh, the, uh, other ecological goods like the value of beef, uh, the value that the beef provide in managing these grasslands and create that livelihood. If it wasn't for the grasslands, there wouldn't be a ranching industry. If it wasn't for the ranching industry, there would be no grasslands. And so to provide that understanding and that value uh, to producers or to, uh, to the general public and really put a sea of value in these grasslands for our food sovereignty here in this province. Uh, with COVID-19, we're seeing the impacts of food sovereignty. We, we, we realize that we become reliant on food being brought in from the states or from other parts of the world. And there's gonna be a need for more and more localized food. Where's your best localized food? Working with your local rancher and producer and uh, acquiring and working with them to provide you with that safe, sustainable meat and beef products that are very um, not are only sustainable from an ecological perspective but also sustainable for providing local economies. My first memories of Native Prairie are really borrowed memories from my mum. She grew up in southern Alberta, it, uh, very close to the Hand Hills and the big sweeping grasslands there. And she entertained me and my sisters with stories of her childhood, of the crocuses and the buffalo beans and the shooting stars. So it was part of the mythology. The prairie is part of the mythology of my family. This was some of the land that my grandfather bought back in the 1920s, uh, hearing stories about my dad telling when they were kids they used to come down to this area where the springs are and play with the bison skulls. I remember when I was small, my dad and my grandpa and myself would come out to our native prairie sections of pasture that we use and look for crocuses in the spring and I really, really enjoy looking back on those memories and still continuing to do that today. 
One fun memory I have of being on native grassland are the sunrises. Um, my background is in grassland songbird research, and so um, I've had a lot of early mornings. Those surveys usually start half an hour before dawn, and so I've gotten to see a lot of uh, sunrises on native grassland, and they are gorgeous. I highly recommend um, get up early one morning and go see it. It's definitely worth it. Walking amongst the pastures and uh, picking choke cherries and and Saskatoons, um, those types of things that I grow grew up seeing uh, and the wildlife I grew up seeing are some of the fondest memories I ever have. My fondest memory of Native Prairie was in 2012 when I was studying sage grouse in southeast Alberta and I hadn't seen them yet all field season and uh, I was at one of the last remaining leks uh, with my now husband and we were safe distance away just the sun just crept over this just still calm native prairie and then all of a sudden we could we could hear them and uh, start to see two males and their tail feathers coming up on the lek and start to dance and it was just the most calm just awe-inspiring breathtaking moment and it felt like it was it happened yesterday it was so memorable and clear in my head and it was in that moment that i decided that i would do whatever i could uh, to bring people into nature so that they could have those types of connections and experiences with Native Prairie and um, that I would do whatever I can so that my kids and uh, hopefully future grandkids would be able to have those same experiences and memories. But as producers, uh, I think as livestock producers, we can make sure that we are benefiting the land, benefiting um, our native habitat, and not getting caught up in chasing the almighty dollar by short-term solutions that turn into long-term uh, problems. Um, before you know it, for the sake of a canola crop, you've lost part of a native parcel that may never or be very, very difficult to come back. So I think to the general public, I think a person needs to make them aware and, you know, basically describe how things would be different without native prairie and not in a good way. I think there's a lot of things people can do to help. And I think it can start in your own, your own backyard, um, just paying attention to what's in your yard and learning and um, doing things like planting native wildflowers and building different houses for different types of wildlife um, and just getting out into nature to kind of increase your your, your connection to it because once you kind of feel that connection and have those memories you're um it's just a lot more personal personal and you share those experiences with your friends and your family and uh you know once we're able to uh join different groups across the province and and volunteer and help steward the landscape that way with different groups that are doing uh, hands-on conservation on native prairie but I really think it just starts with you personally and um, building those memories with Native Prairie. I'm a big advocate for uh, talking to people about using that ranchers are the real reason why prairie is still left in this province. If we lose the prairie, if we lose the ranching industry, we would lose the prairie. If there was no ranching industry, there would be no prairie left. And so supporting uh, local beef producers, beef ranchers, bison ranchers, uh, supporting them either through buying product from them or educating your friends and family that buy local meat and uh, support your local ranching community. If you're even a vegetarian or a, non or a limited meat eater, <clears throat> you can still support the ranching industry and uh, by just showing your support by talking with your friends and family about the value that these grasslands provide. Uh, the, the grasslands evolved under 10,000 years of grazing uh, with uh, traditionally bison but then also other animals like elk and deer and other species uh, with this uh, um, 
settlement of the prairies, we lost the bison, we lost the wildlife numbers, but we brought in cattle and cattle are the surrogate for that grazing disturbance and grasslands require that disturbance to be sustainable. Uh, fire as well was a man er, was part of what the grasslands evolved under and so um, whether it's wildfires or managed prescribed fires are a way to control, uh, manage these native prairies to keep them sustainable, keep them rejuvenated, uh, get more pollinating uh, wildflowers growing, uh, reduce the shrub cover. As you can see behind me here, Cranberry Flats, you can see uh, with the lack of disturbance, with the lack of fire, with the lack of grazing, we're seeing an increase in tree species. And so that natural disturbance of grazing and fire keeps these grasslands healthy. And so we need to work with uh, with the producers and land managers to ensure that these grasslands stay healthy forever. So if you're part of the general public, I think one of the best things to do is to get out and experience native prairie for yourself. So lots of organizations have public access land that you can go and visit, or you can visit your nearest provincial park or grasslands national park and really get out and see all the life that's there in native prairie. It really is an amazing ecosystem to explore. Um, and learn to love it. People protect what they know and love. So I think that's a great way to start to contribute to the conservation of native prairie in the province. If you're lucky enough to own native prairie yourself, um, there's different options you can look into in protecting it after you might have sold your land um, or passed it along to the next generation, such as conservation easements. And there's information out there about how you can have the best practices um, for the other species that might share your land, uh, working in conjunction with whatever your livelihood might be. If you want to learn how to further conserve native prairie or contribute to the conservation of native prairie, there's lots of really great organizations in the province that are doing good work conserving native prairie, um, such as Nature Saskatchewan. And most of them are member-based and they really rely on the support from the public to support the work that they do. So if you look into those and um, become a member maybe, uh, you're working to support the conservation of native prairie in the province uh, to protect it for future generations to come. If people can support the ranchers and those who work on the native prairie, they can eat you know, beef and lamb and goats and all that other good stuff that's raised on the prairie. They can visit the parks, they can volunteer at different areas, they can educate themselves, and of course they can donate to organizations like PCAP or South of the Divide Conservation Action Program, those type of um, organizations that, that help um, protect the native prairie. People can go learn more about the prairie from those who are intimate with it. Ranchers, grassland biologists, and First Nations, both elders and users. And then go out there and see, hear, touch, taste, smell for themselves. The passion to conserve the prairie will come after.